Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. We just got done watching, well, a unique hearing before the Washington State Supreme Court, before Commissioner Michael Johnston. We're going to talk to Pete Serrano from the Silent Majority Foundation about what happened because it was a unique hearing, but I think it's pretty easy to read the tea leaves. So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about so what happened today with Washington's magazine ban injunction? Okay, so the case we're talking about yet again today is State of Washington versus Gators Guns. As you know, this case was argued before Washington State Supreme Court Commissioner Michael Johnson as to whether or not the temporary stay should have remained in place pending the litigation on the merits of this case. Now, it was a bizarre hearing. I do do want to thank the commissioner and the attorney general for talking about Washington Gun Law on our channel for a few minutes. We appreciate the free advertising. But uh, without further ado, let's just talk to Pete about what happened today because it was interesting. All right. Hey, check it out, everyone. We got Pete Serrano, your future attorney general, here with us right now. Now, Pete, we just got done watching one of the more um, unique oral arguments I've ever seen. The judge spent about 30 minutes before anyone even got a word in edgewise just explaining his process. And I, I do want to get something out of the way, which is one of the things that he did mention is that apparently after he issued the stay, he'd received some pretty nasty emails and even some pretty nasty phone calls. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. That's At least that's what he's telling us. So, I yeah. mean, and I I don't think he's lying about that. I don't think so either. And so and so before we get into what happened in court, I want to explain to everybody that, you know, there is a level of decorum. There is a level of civility that we operate. Pete and I operate on, even though we may vehemently disagree with the people who are sitting at the other side of the table. There is a level of civility that comes with the court system. And that goes for all of you who are affected by the court system. So I'm asking all of you. Even if you're super ticked off at Commissioner Michael Johnston, you are not to be calling him or emailing him, especially at home in the evening and things like that. Come on, we are better than that, people. So I'm asking all of you, you know, we can have an open dialogue how disappointed we are about rulings, but there's no reason to be taken out on him personally. Agreed? A hundred percent. I really appreciate you putting it out there because that doesn't represent you, me, or Silent Majority Foundation well. Amen. Amen. Okay, with that out of the way really bizarre hearing in the sense that we spent 30 minutes with the judge justifying what he had done initializing the stay. Then it was the attorney general's chance to talk. And he, he really did let the attorney general do a lot of talking. And then Austin Hatcher, who was lead counsel today for Silent Majority Foundation, got up. And how would you describe what happened to Austin over the next 15 minutes? Um, He listened and he <laughs> yeah. was patient and he spoke every once in a while. Um, yeah. I mean, that's probably the fairest assessment that I can give of that, or at least the the kindest assessment I can give of that. The yeah. reality is, uh, I mean, you and I were talking about this before. He called Miss Oblinsky a snake oil salesman. Um, you know, look, we back to the point of decorum. We can disagree with experts. I mean, we you've probably read what we put in our opposition to their motion uh, to continue the stay. And we basically called out Lucy Allen for the fact that she had had some, you know, uh, really questionable statements and the fact that her well, Judge data Benitez himself has called out Lucy Allen also. So it wasn't unique to the Silent Majority Foundation calling her out. Well, exactly. But to then take it to that next level and really denigrate her and call call Ms. Iblinski that, that snake oil salesman, I thought was uh, unprofessional and kind quite and unkind, quite frankly. Yeah, it was it was a very bizarre hearing. I do want to thank the commissioner and the attorney general for spending a few minutes talking about Washington gun law and how we coached people to at least and they did at least the attorney general was kind enough to jump in and say legally purchase magazines. So that was true. But it seemed like his honor was incredibly concerned about a freedom week similar to California and referenced it multiple times during the argument today. Oh, he did. And, you know, the notion that that's somehow problematic or somehow Oh, uh, the, uh, the state's interest here, uh, it's it's absolutely incorrectly putting the wrong needle on the wrong pin. Uh, the state's interests are either upholding constitutionalities of laws and actually arguing to support that constitutionality. Um, and what we had here was a situation where it was the concern was somehow 
these magazines would get out and result in mass mass shootings. And again, walking back to the data that even the state's experts provided, even even the commissioner noted that we had called out four since 1992. And he said, well, I think there were actually three. Right. Um, so, again, there was this notion that somehow a Freedom Week would turn us into the Las Vegas shooter, which, which um, he referenced you know, multiple times. Yep. And and Austin did a great job distinguishing the uh, Las Vegas shooter from what you see in tip, typical mass shooting incidences, you know, and even the Uvalde one, that was a very unique situation, um, you know. Yeah, and I think the one thing, and, and again, my, my assessment of Austin's performance today is he is a far more patient advocate than I am. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would have uh, stomach being interrupted and talked over as much as he did. So his level of professionalism was outstanding uh, today. So Austin, kudos to you. Uh, you know, he's a veteran and he also pushed back on the fact that, well, it's a lot more than an offensive weapon, Your Honor. It's, it's in fact, it's a preferred weapon of choice for many veterans for self-defense. And the judge immediately pushed back on it. And his reasoning was, is that, well, he didn't need one. And if he didn't need one, why would anyone else? Yeah, when and, did start, and when did we start, you know, assessing the strength of our rights based upon need? I missed that case. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it was bizarre. You know, he talked about 1791 and Bruin and, you know, Austin, to the to your point, uh, pushing back, push back on that and noted that the Supreme Court has upheld certain uh, free speech rights on the Internet, which I'm I don't know about you, but I'm pretty certain didn't exist in 1791 either. Um, and, and so. I mean, look, it, to me, it was where it was going. I mean, I, I'd be I'd be pleasantly surprised if he dissolved his state. Um, we've talked about this before. I didn't think that would happen. But right. uh, I think it's much less likely based on how this went today. Um, you know, and, and it is what it is. It's unfortunate. Um, I, good news is people saw it on TVW. It'll get its replays. Yeah, and we're going to link it up down below once it's uh, once we got the link, because it takes a few hours to get online, but we'll link it up down below. It is a, uh, well, Pete, you and I have been both doing this for a long time. That is not the normal decorum of what, how we see these hearings go. No, it's not. I mean, uh, you know, while he fairly well masked or tempered his frustration or anger, it was clearly visible at times. Mm. Um, you know, I don't know the guy. Maybe he's got a tick. But there were clear expressions of, of to me, which showed anger. Um, and I thought, you know, this, to be fair, to be a fair and accurate and honest hearing, maybe he should have just given it to his deputy commissioner. I don't know. Well, and listen, I, I, I wonder if some of that anger could have been because there are this is a loaded issue for a judge. And then we we have individuals that are complicating the equation by acting out in ways that you and I both disagree with. So, again, I'm going to caution everyone. Let's yeah. we're better than that. And and, and I, if, if, if the judge wants to get ticked off at one of the litigants over one of their arguments, that, that's what we're in court to do. OK, yeah. but I really only want that to be motivating the anger from the judge and not these external factors. Um, judge said we would probably get a ruling sometime next week. I think the smart money is on what? Uh, keeping the stay in place, you okay. know, yeah. whether or not silent majority foundation has the ability to, uh, appeal that stay to the, the court is going to be the question down the road. Uh, as he already laid out, I mean, I, I will thank him for laying out the procedure here, uh, not just on the stay, but as to the actual appeal on the merits itself. Um, I think he had the calendar, right. The state's um, motion for discretionary review is due, I believe, April 23rd. Um, we still have to designate a record, and then we'll have the opportunity to fill in the blanks of our expert testimony, which I thought was interesting. He cited Hitlinski, uh, then didn't note the fact that she is one of our experts that was designated, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> tomato, tomato, huh? Right, right, right. So this case is obviously going to the Washington State Supreme Court. State of Washington versus Gator Guns is going to be in front of all nine justices in the Washington State Supreme Court. When do you anticipate that actually being on the calendar? Uh, depending on how far we go, if it, you know, I mean, if if they they technically could deny discretionary review, and because uh, Judge Basher granted the motion for summary judgment, you know, I'll, I will note this: I have been incorrect as 
I've told folks it'd go back to the trial court. Uh, that's not true. It would go to the appellate court. I was yeah. I was thinking they, that we were they, just on the preliminary injunction, but realizing that the fundamental basis was a summary judgment, right. it would go to the appellate court. So I'll walk that back and say I gave bad information there. Okay, um, so one way or the other, this case is either going to be argued in front of Division Two, Washington State Court of Appeals, yeah. or the Supreme Court will just and accept I, review. I can almost guarantee the Supreme Court's going to take it. Whether or not they do it on, I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't do it on discretionary review. Uh, there's pretty substantive information there. I don't know what else an appellate record could give them. Well, and it's coming there anyways, yeah. right? Because if it goes to Division Two, it's probably coming to the Washington State Supreme Court on a petition anyway. So it will. It will. So I don't I don't know why they wouldn't take it aside from not wanting to deal with it. All right. You know, last thing. Hey, you know, we talk about this all the time, man. This kind of this kind of litigation, especially when we start getting up in the Court of Appeals, Supreme Court, man, this stuff ain't cheap. How can folks help the Silent Majority Foundation out? Yeah. SMFJB.org. That's SMFJB.org. SilentMajorityFoundation.org. We do have a link specific to Gators Guns. Um, you know, and we're looking at seeking funding also from alternative sources that are a little deeper pocketed on this. All Look, right. folks, we will fight for your rights. That's what Silent Majority Foundation is and does. Uh, to your point, Austin, Karen, Brett, you know, uh, Carolyn, Rob, uh, PJ, uh, Katie, Caleb. I think I got everyone. We've got a hell of a team. Um, I am super proud of you. Keep up the fight. We will. And thank you for your efforts on behalf of the people of Washington. All right. He's Pete Serrano, president of Silent Majority Foundation. We will keep you all posted. Pete, good luck in the attorney general's race. I'm sure we'll be in touch real soon. Stay safe, brother. Thanks, brother. We'll talk soon. OK, so listen, we said all along that if we got an injunction out of Cowlitz County Court, we would likely only have a very short window of time that it likely would be stayed. And from that point forward, it would likely remain stayed pending the litigation. It is proving to be exactly as we predicted it, which means at the current time you cannot lawfully purchase a high capacity magazine you cannot lawfully import a high capacity magazine you cannot lawfully manufacture a high capacity magazine and obviously to all the ffls out there you cannot lawfully sell or offer for sale any type of high capacity magazine until and only until this law is overturned listen if you guys got any more questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our second amendment rights you should know how to get a hold of washington gun law by now if you don't that's okay that information is down there in the description box and then finally let's everybody remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner like we talk about all the time here is to know what the law is in every situation how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself until next time thanks for watching and stay safe